Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. This is Tamisha, also known as Mrs. Coda. So today we are going to talk about brain injury. We're going to look at TBI, right? Traumatic brain injury. And we're also going to look at intervention. So today I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to take you guys into a slideshow and we are going to go through step by step each of these and um, trying to give you an understanding and break it down. I figure we'll kind of mix up the format today. If you want to understand a little bit more about the Rancos Los Amigos scale, definitely stay tuned because I'm going to jump into it right now. Alrighty, so as promised, we're going to jump right into the 10 stages of brain injury and intervention. So I'm going to explain um, traumatic brain injury. And, you know, just let me know if you really enjoy this format and I can make some more videos just like this, okay? All right, so the first one is coma, okay? This is the first stage, and this stage allows the brain to heal, and patience is unresponsive. There's no neurological response. They're gonna appear like they're sleeping. Um, the kind of intervention that really happens at this stage is not much. It's really focused on positioning. They're totally dependent for everything, um, grooming. You want to support the nursing staff with any skin breakdown. So that's where your positioning comes into. Okay. Next stage. So stage two, this is going to be your vegetative state. Okay. Um, your vegetative state, again, neurological responses. There's some um, that can be seen, um, and some of these reflexes causes response in the brain that remains intact. It's not so much that you are physically seeing it. It's more like they're being picked up on the monitors, that there's some neurological responses happening there. Um, again, the focus, the intervention is going to continue to be Positioning, total dependent for grooming and everything else. You could try to add in a little stimuli at this point um, to support or to improve that neurological response that's starting to fire up. But again, there's not much happening at this stage. So stage three, this is your minimal consciousness, okay? So there's going to continue to be some neurological responses. Some reflexes are going to be observed at this point. Um, now you can actually physically see the responses, such as, you know, if you shine a light on their eyes, they, they're going to blink. Um, they're going to come in and out of some awareness of um, people. They may response. You might see a, a response like a smile if they recognize someone. There's going to be um, some noted pain responses as well, some sensory. Um, so your intervention is going to slightly improve, but not by too much because we're still in that total dependent um, phase. So your focus is going to continue to be positioning. They're still totally dependent with their grooming. Um, you're going to increase your stimuli. So this is the use of feathers. This is the use of touch, right? Um, you might also see some minimal tracking as well, like head turns. But again, it's still minimal, but you can still support um, the patient through this level of recovery. All right, so the next one, so stage four, is where we get into our confusion stage. So stage four is your post-traumatic amnesia. All right, so the patient... Um, at this stage, there's inability to remember past events. There's inability to form new memories. They're very confused. They're, you're, there's noted behavior change. Um, this is very hard for the family at this stage because the patient is very moody. They're aggressive. They're confused. They don't know where they are. They don't know what has happened, right? So at this stage, they're going to, your intervention is going to be very challenging, going to be very difficult. So they're going to still need a max assist of one to two person for grooming. Um, there will be, um, there, there will be some responsiveness. Um, 
but like I said, it's going to be very difficult. So safety is going to be top priority at this stage. So the next stage is inappropriate behavior. So they're going to be having difficulty focusing. They're still confused, but their behavior slowly starts to improve. There's difficulty with expressive communication, but they're not so much agitated as before in stage four. Okay, so your intervention will start to improve as the behavior improves as well. So now they're about modify to max assist for their ADLs. You will note and see that there's an improper use of, let's say, any equipment or toothbrushes or combs. You, you know, they're using it incorrectly. Maybe they're using a spoon as a comb. Like, you're going to see stuff like that. Um, they're going to have difficulty with retention. So in this stage, you're going to be doing a lot of hand over hand and verbal cueing um, and guiding. Safety, again, like I said, is going to be very important at this stage. Next stage is stage six, which is considered appropriate confused, all right? So there's still some confusion, but it's a, their behavior is more appropriate. So that's why it's called confused, appropriate or appropriate confused. You will see increased awareness and attention span about 15, 30 minutes during activities, but still there's going to be um, a lot of cueing um, at, your, at your intervention level. Is going to be more so modified assistance for ADLs. Okay, this is where you're going to start doing some more carryover training. Um, you're going to continue with hand over hand training. Um, you could even imp try to implant mirror therapy. Um, but again, you got to still take the cognition into account. And you're going to continue with environmental safety as well. Because once somebody's still confused, you're still going to need to keep safety as a top priority in mind okay so stage number seven this is now we're moving into our new learning phase okay so this is going to be your automatic and your appropriate phase so this is where new learning occurs here minimal attention span uh, continues but they're more expressive um, they're still having difficulty with emotional regulation and social interaction. So your intervention is going to be, um, for ADLs, it's going to be about minimum assistance, right? So you're working on improving training with verbal and also some tactile cueing. You can start to slowly challenge them with some complex tasks, but obviously not too complex because they're now starting to come into their own and starting to have an idea. OK, so this is definitely that stage where you're going to start seeing an increase of learning. So stage eight, this is going to be considered your purposeful stage. OK, um, at this stage, you're going to continue new learning. Right. But you will know and see an improved um, improvement in their memory and awareness. They're still going to struggle with social interaction, but you're also going to see that they're improving with their coping skills. Um, they're remembering information a lot better than before. Um, when it comes to their ADLs, now they're at standby assist, or we what we can say contact guard assist. Okay, so this is still appropriate. This is um, going to be big for family. Family. This is um, family training is going to be at this point. Um, you're going to be working on ADLs and compensatory techniques, adaptive strategies. Um, home training is a, is definitely um, important at this level. So as we continue, we're going to con continue into stage nine. Stage nine is is still purposeful, but it's a supervision level. So it's just an increased level from where we just we're at a standby assist. Like I mentioned, standby assist family involvement is very vital at that stage. So at supervision, you're still going to have, you can still have family involvement. Some people may have occasional home care, um, home assistant care um, coming in. But at this stage, you're going to, you're always going to continue new learning 
with observable retention. So now at this stage, you're going to notice that they're doing pretty good. They may or may not need someone to come into the home to support them. Um, they're able to recognize and verbalize their needs. They're improved with their coping and expressive thought. They can tell you what they need, what they don't like, all that good stuff. So the intervention is really just supervision. Um, they can complete ADLs. Um, they're going to lead less modifications. And this is going to be pretty much uh, your heightened ADL training. Okay, so you're going to really focus on challenging them, more complex tasks, more more day-to-day -day task. All right. And then finally, the last stage is your purposeful dependent. Okay. At this stage, um, it's considered full recovery. Okay. Some may be considered modified independent. Maybe they need to walk with a cane or maybe they need, you know, certain things in their tub. They would be considered modified and independent. But they can plan ahead, they can multitask, they have the average cognitive speed like anyone else, some greater than others. Um, and like I said, the intervention at this stage is they're, they're fully independent. Um, they can complete ADLs and IDL tasks with very minimal compensatory tools required. Um, at this point, you are done. <laughs> so congratulations, good job to you for getting this um, patient to this point. So I hope that you like this. I hope this was short and sweet. You guys know I try to keep my videos short. So be sure to definitely hit that notification bell, like this video, tell your friends, and don't forget to subscribe. All right, until next time, guys. Bye-bye.